Welcome to the No Budget Indie Filmcast, where we dip into the independent film universe to highlight those little films that you might not have heard about elsewhere. We agree with our panel, or will our panel agree with each other? Tune in to find out. I am Milo Dennison, and with me, as always, is Claire Milan. Hello. And Cahal Feeney. Hello. All right, Cahal, what's on the agenda this week? On the agenda this week is a film called Sai, which is written and directed by Thomas Percy Kim and stars King Hong Lee. The film is about a young guy. Uh, he's a young adult, I presume. He's maybe he's supposed to be a teenager, but he looks older. And he is Asian American. And that's a, that's the, the, the key aspect of this film. So he's an Asian American guy who has grown up presumably among in this society, in this environment where he's surrounded by mostly, if not total, uh, white, a white Anglo-Saxon, uh, in a white Anglo-Saxon world. All his friends are, you know, white. His parents are white. And this, this is starting to become a, an issue um, as as he that this film depicts he is he is subject to a lot of sort of insidious racism um yeah, like it's 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 not particularly overt but it's it's there and it's pretty obvious uh and you can see how it affects him how he absorbs it but at the same time he 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 doesn't really push back at it because he wants to fit in so it's like a sort of a a bullying uh, versus a bullier relationship, you 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 take a lot of it because you know you're 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 afraid that it I don't know it'll get worse if you if you re- react in some way. Um. So then, like in the film, this is shown in a lot of you know different ways. So at the very beginning, he's he's playing he's playing baseball, and it's the last ball of the inning, and he's subbed. Suddenly, he's subbed, and this new guy's brought in, and uh, there's nothing. There's nothing really overt in this. Like the the, but you look to the sideline and see this woman talking to the coach, and suddenly he's brought it. He, you know, he's he's given the sort of the shepherd's hook, and uh, you you could you could imagine maybe she's saying like you know, get the Asian guy off, put my put my boy on, but it's never said. It, you know, it looks fine but from his perspective. If if it was possibly just a sort of a once-off thing, he might take it, but then. You, you you can see there's a sort of a a catalog of things happen over the, the course of the film that uh you know it makes you understand you know what it is he has to put up with and I, you know how difficult it is and and then at the end you see that how how frustrated he is about the whole thing and he just wants to he he wants to be like everybody else but at the same time he you know I guess he knows he never could you know, he he can shake off like how people are going to perceive him because of the way he looks. Yeah, it was I, kind of interesting, wasn't it? Um, yeah, you go ahead, Milo. Go on. No, you're fine. Go for it. Um, yeah, it was quite interesting. Um, because as white people, we don't experience racism. Um, but it's uh, it it just shows you how a person who's who is being bullied can become the bullies as well. Because in this situation, like it, it made me feel very un- uncomfortable. This film, especially where he was kind of getting beaten up in the changing rooms, and um, yeah, I just thought at first I thought I was just like play fighting, but he was really the guy was really punching him and trying to hurt him, and it kind of went on a little bit long. So uh, the film did make me feel uncomfortable and uh, gave me an insight into kind of the pack mentality. Of, of bullies because there's a bit where um they're in the car and they're um they're kind of goading each other and then they call him a racist term uh or they, they say a racist term and then there, there's a woman in another car and she's uh, the abuse has been directed towards her um yeah it's it's yeah it's definitely an insight into into this kind of world but uh there was something as well that i I didn't really connect to any of the characters. There's something lacking in it for me. I wanted to really like the main guy, but he just 
wasn't likable really I didn't really feel sorry for him I don't know why even though it was a harsh um horrible thing to experience with, with the bullying and, and the racism it just I didn't I just there was no wasn't enough meat to it or something I don't know what it was I just didn't connect with it as much as I wanted to hmm. it, it's interesting because I've heard about this where like people that are of a minority race that are raised in predominantly white places and they'll their friends or whatever will say something which is deemed racist and they take it as like, like Molly, but but their friends aren't necessarily saying it to be offensive. They're saying it because they think they're being funny. And so, and then they don't get called out on it. So then it must make it okay. Right. So then they keep doing stuff like that. So it's kind of a weird balance. But as this kid, of course, you want to fit in. And so he's not going to call his friends out for being racist because he doesn't want to be ostracized in some way. And especially like sports. I mean, in U.S. schools, the jocks are generally all assholes in U.S. schools and they're their own little group and they're mean to everybody that's not in their little group. And so I'm sure the main character in this is thinking like, I could easily be ostracized from this group and then what kind of a thing. So, so it is an interesting story as well. And same thing when they start yelling at the girl in the car, like they're jocks they're high school assholes they're like the it's it's a weird thing because you know as kids you hate them all yet when they become famous baseball players or football players suddenly you're rooting for them and and it's kind of stupid but mm -hmm. um I, the the thing with this film that i kind of like too is the way they tell the story without really saying anything out loud and so you get the point of view of the main character because you know, if it's blatant racism, it's blatant racism and you can call it out. But in this case, it's not really blatant racism. It's kind of subtle and it's not, and it might not even be racism. It's just people being stupid. Yeah. But if they're not being called out for it, because, of course, he's not going to call them out for it, um, then it just kind of continues and builds on itself. And by the way, the filmmaker did in this film, he showed I what I imagine to be a, the total reality of a person in this situation, which is nice. And he just does it through these like nice long shots. Like there's the shot with he's washing his hands, right? And it goes on for kind of a long time. And it's just got the music playing, a uh, quick little conversation with the parents, like all this little stuff that happens throughout his little evening that, that shows like this is a day-to-day -day life and how he's like wants to do something, but like, what can you do? And so you just kind of keep going along with it but you could tell it's kind of eating at him a little bit, uh, which which I think is really nicely done on the part of the storyteller. Or yeah, the writer it's interesting director. when he he's kind of scrubs his hands. It's like he feels the dirt. You know, he feels dirty for partaking in these these racist attacks and going along with it. But you can you can definitely see that he he's he's conflicted, but he does mm -hmm. want to be part of the group. But he does look a lot older than a teenager, and all the <laughs> totally. group they definitely look like they're in their well in their thirties. Do you know, <laughs> so that's that's the one thing. It's like, no, he's too he's too old to have parents looking youngish. Well, you know, <laughs> that's the thing I was trying to figure out. Like, are they high school kids? Are they after high school? And they're on just like their local softball team, because yeah. in that begin in the opening sequence where they're playing the game, like it's not, uh, it doesn't appear to be like a, a high school game because there's not a bunch big crowd there at the high school game. That's just a couple small bleachers. So is it like a local? afternoon team that they play on just like a league like a little league kind of thing with the kids and but but yeah they, they look a bit older and you're like okay yeah. so after a while you figured out okay okay they're yeah. a bunch of like high school aged kids or whatever yeah, but man. when you watch them first you're like uh they seem a bit old oh my gosh. especially yeah, when it goes back to the parents and they're like how are you doing or something you yeah, know yeah. son or so I was like, wash your hands yeah yeah for the last 35 years to wash your hands no, um, but like that scene in the locker room, um, like where, where he's been he beaten with the towel or whatever it is, yes, that it's it, it does go on a bit long, it is it is uncomfortable, and yeah, uh, it's it, it somehow you could you could see it as somehow allegorical, like this is this is what it's like, this is this is what he has to put up with all the time, and he and he's laughing, pretending it's okay, it's okay, but. It's obviously hurting him, you know, physically yeah. hurting him. Mm -hmm. So, but he, 
he just he puts up with it he lets it happen because mm-hmm. you know he, he he as i said he 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 just wants to as much as he can not not to rock the boat here. He want, he wants to be one of them. And that at that age, that's totally the reality. Like if you guys remember being young, like how much you just want to fit it in with a certain like with your local social group or whatever, whatever you deem and stuff. And often you don't call things out that you should, or you behave in a way that you're like, uh. You know, I shouldn't do that, but you don't really think about it at the time. You just accept it and go along with it. And then years later, you're like, wow, that was terrible. Mm. I I don't know about you, but I was never like that. Really? You're an angel card, (laughs) were you? I don't know. I'm not going to fess up to anything. Kaho was the bully in school. Oh, but totally. I can see that. Kaho yeah. <laughs> Kaho would have been the kid that was driving the car, like, you know, yeah. yelling at people out the window and all that. Well, yeah. I did think there was going to be a big car crash. I was like, oh, here it comes, you know, but it wasn't. It wasn't spoiler, non spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. Nobody, nobody is injured in the making of this film, <laughs> the, the viewing of it. Yeah. I like, I like, I like the use of the slow motion in, in there as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then when they showed his reaction, that's what you're you're waiting for his reaction, and you can see he becomes the thing that he hates, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Uh was it uh I don't know, is is it would you, could you call that Stockholm syndrome? Maybe. No, it isn't really no. Stockholm syndrome, no. No, I think it's more a kind of a group mentality kind yeah, of thing. Pack mentality, yeah. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Yeah. I'm sure some therapist can analyze this film and mm. let us know. Mm. Um, so, and any, I mean, it was very, you know, I thought, I thought, I thought it was very well made. Like, and I thought the acting was good. I, I mean, I did, I did, I did empathize with the main character. Uh, I, I know you didn't necessarily, Claire, but I, yeah, I thought it was very convincing. I mean, apart from the age problem, but yeah. I, I thought, I thought. Uh, the way he internalized it, he did that very well. And even there was a scene uh, when he, when they were leaving the locker room and he was calling out his friend to wait. Hey, hold up, hold up. Uh, again, it was just a very simple thing, but you might you might think like he's leaving him behind because he didn't get, he didn't give it, he didn't give a damn about him. And then when he's he's running out, you kind of running out in a sort of a half kind of casual. Uh, I'm not really bothered in a way, but it, it just seems it, it's it, the way he th- it seemed quite affected the way he was doing it. it seemed like deliberate, you know, how he, his body language, even in that in that instance. Uh, so, uh, you could see like it was another example of of how, how, how he was affected, yeah, yeah. Like, he honestly believes that they would leave him behind. So, mm-hmm. which is why he's trying to catch up, but he also doesn't want to seem like he knows, you know, they, yeah. he thinks that they would leave him by him. And, you know, maybe they would. They, maybe they'd think it was a funny joke, like, ah, we left him kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's it's believable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you want to rate it? Mm-hmm. Claire, go f- you want to go or you want me to go? Uh, yeah. Uh, so for me, um, yeah, it was an eye opener into I suppose, these type of racism, hack mentality, bullying. Uh, it just lacked a little bit something for me. I just couldn't connect with the characters, uh, but it's still a great you no know, budget film and well worth a watch. So I'm gonna give it three stars. Yeah, uh, I don't know if it connected with me either, but I definitely can empathize. I, it did take me back to being a kid, and and that kind of mindset of like worrying about it being ostracized and wanting to be part. And I think it's a brilliant bit of filmmaking with how it's really subtly done. And gets that message through. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go four stars. Yeah. Um, I I am I. I liked it. I thought it was, it was, uh, very, very intelligently done, and the way it it it, it uh, used this theme, and and depicted it and represented it, uh. And uh, yeah, I, I, I just thought it was very convincing um, and, you know, quite a quite a powerful film in its own way. So I'm going to give it four stars. 
Well, there you go, folks. You can check it out. It's called Psy. And uh, you can always let us know what you think of it. You can leave a comment in this video on YouTube. You can always reach us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at No Budget Show if you want to contact us for any reason, even this film or something else. And with that, we'll say goodbye and see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.